your slide up. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, so we are uh, Miki and Ivana. We are we've come all the way from Serbia to tell you uh, a little secret about how you can make your community uh, healthier and better. So uh, we have witnessed we have witnessed that uh, during recent years there's been a significant shift of activities from uh, towards online way um, doing which we have noticed that there's a lack of specific groups uh, so it actually uh, inspired us to uh, re when we re-established our uh, live uh, interactions and events to shed light on those underrepresented groups um, so Basically, we have uh, checked with the strategic recommendation to provide for safety and inclusion, and we wanted to address those um, groups of uh, part of our community, the niches that were uh, absent on our events. So basically, um, we are going to tell you how uh, we have done it, how we learned uh, in the past years to do it, um, but also what is important here is it is good uh, way of functioning also uh, for the communities that have uh, little or no resources, meaning no staff members, no annual plans, or even no uh, budget for those projects. So uh, <clears throat> we, are, we have uh, six uh, important topics that have to be addressed for uh, those projects that we did. So uh, first is you, you look at your complete community, local community, language community, um, and you check the needs or basically what are the problems that your community can face uh, that you want to address those problems. So uh, you would recognize the social injustice or um, uh, basically, you focus on the, uh, this proactive approach towards people that are missing in your community or are underrepresented. So, um, very important part of it is to find people who think likewise. So, you reach out to the NGOs that are part of it or that are dealing with uh, important topic that you want to tackle and uh, also government bodies that might want to uh, start a collaboration on it. Um, you would also need to establish cooperation in order to have, or we advise, to uh, start a, a partnership in order to have long-term partnership and long-term projects about it. Uh, but also the most, most important part, we are your resources we, but also all of the wiki community, meaning um, find an affiliate with experience for um, cross-cultural collaboration, meaning there is always some community that already did something like that, or that is very willing to do something, um, something as important as your work is. Uh, so <clears throat> the third part is to determine what uh, are the project types that are specific to the, um, the target group that you want to deal with, meaning to consider the needs of the community. And for example, in accordance to your budget or lack thereof, you can try to organize um, either editathons or micro grants, photo tours, anything that would be interesting. Um, by the way, we will uh, have uh, examples of this, how we have uh, fixed it in, in, in case you have any um, inclarities uh, about it. So there is also a very important problem that you might face, which is uh, lack of information regarding those topics. So as we have witnessed some uh, groups, some uh, some important topics uh, lack reference in history. So there is absence of online, uh, online resource or books or articles. So be sure to have that prepared in order to engage the community and have already prepared references. 
for those projects and also to determine accessibility regarding to the uh, people who are uh, participating on your projects, check if it's better for them to access online, if they have special needs, if they uh, prefer in-person events, safer, um, safer environments, um, basically anything that would be best for, the, for that group to uh, feel safe around you. And even I can continue. So the next thing is when you, sorry, uh, when you have your project type, when you decide your uh, target group, when you decide what um, group you want to deal with, what ta uh, problems you want to tackle in your own community, uh, basically uh, we want to outline our project in terms of setting the goals. And sometimes we are very enthusiastic in terms of those goals. We want, uh, we want to achieve a lot of things. We want to achieve it in a, uh, such, uh, such a small period of time, but we have to be realistic. We have to have um, realistic goals, realistic uh, targets we want to achieve, um, especially if we want to, uh, if we are time limited. For example, if we got a grant and we have to do it in several months. Um, so, um, other than setting the achievable targets, we have to think about the metrics. So what are the relevant measures of success? And uh, usually we have already some measures of success, uh, success in our heads, but sometimes it's um, we, we have to think out, outside of the box and think about what is actually giving the satisfaction to our participants and our new editors. And uh, determining uh, the milestones it's a very important step because this is an incentive for uh, our project leaders, for our project teams um, that is making the project sustainable, making the project last not just in that uh, year that you're trying to realize that, but also in the following years. Um, and this is laying the foundation for uh, your future work. Um, of course, there's a lot of challenges and uh, there's a lot of lessons learned so far, but lessons to be learned in the future as well. And um, because we are dealing with such sensitive, um, sensitive topics, usually we are dealing with it, right? Um, we are facing challenges in terms of vandalism. We are facing challenges in terms of um, safe environment uh, for work. Uh, so what we want to achieve there is create the safe environment for new participants, for new editors. Um, we want to uh, make uh, information accessible, um, not just by providing those information, but also providing uh, the tools for specific groups, uh, groups to assess them. Assess them. Uh, because we are dealing with some topics, uh, very specific topics, maybe we won't uh, have um, a lot of volunteers who want to deal with that, uh, but that's why we can partner with other organizations and use their own capacities, volunteer capacities or, or staff capacities uh, to increase the interest for the topic. Uh, and um, all of this um, um, might uh, affect the retention of new participants, especially if we are dealing with uh, groups that are already facing a lot of discrimination, a lot of types of discrimination. That's why we want to um, create that safe environment for them to uh, stay on the project, stay uh, in our uh, activities, um, in a lot of our future activities as well. And lessons to be learned and lessons learned already. Uh, and we want to invite you to share your own uh, as well, uh, is to prepare sources. Sources are sometimes the major obstacle in our uh, activities because uh, because of the historical uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, we don't have enough sources about women, for example. Um, that's why we reach out to some libraries uh, and we say, okay, uh, there's a lot of women there and a lot of sources, so combine those two and you, uh, um, you face that challenge successfully. Um, also, um, provide motivational means, meaning giving barn stars or giving gift cards and awards. And this is something you can do with um, small amounts of financial resources and also resor resources in general. 
Um, mentorship is something that is really, really helpful. Um, we do have a mentorship program on Serbian Wikipedia, but also uh, we are trying to uh, network ex experienced editors and editors who are new to the project um, and to maybe combine, as Carla mentioned, um, similar editors. For, we also have a Wiki Senior program, so we're trying to connect them and there's a lot of friendship there, which is kind of really cool. Uh, and not just seniors, but also students, uh, female editors. So we have this successful example of this female editor being Wiki Librarian, being senior, and being Wikipedian of the Year on Serbian Wikipedia at the, at the end of that year. So this mentorship is really, really important. If you have the capacity to um, to provide a person of trust and safety, that would be great uh, because this is the person who can help new people uh, who are facing any kind of harassment, any kind of discrimination, any kind of hate speech. Uh, they can um, provide, uh, that person can provide support to the new editors, especially to the editors from uh, underrepresented groups. And all of this being said, now, now we are trying to give you an example how we did it. Um, we'll try uh, to present this in two examples. If then we'll try to, to also um, um, try uh, hear your thoughts and questions. But we do have some more examples if we uh, still need, uh, have time. So, uh, for example, uh, we de dealt with a lot of um, issues regarding. Uh, women topics. So um, uh, there's there's two problems here, two issues that we want to tackle with. Uh, the first one is lack of articles of notable women on Serbia Wikipedia, but also, also lack of female editors, um, which is something that we all facing, right? We are all talking about it uh, at this conference as well. Um, and the main uh, challenge here is that we have um, poor accessibility to knowledge um, in terms of literature, in terms of um, um, sources that we want to use, relevant sources that we want to use. And we also have uh, this challenge where Wiki community, Wiki core community, sometimes are not so eager to accept uh, the relevance of those notable women's be women because they, there aren't enough re uh, sources to uh, provide those facts. So what we did is that we partnered with uh, a Swedish embassy um, and organized together uh, Wikigap. Uh, we partnered with the uh, Wikimedians of Republic of Srpska um, and together with them we uh, organized um, contest and uh, editatons, but also um, with wiki librarians. Uh, we are um, collaborating uh, with this this specific library, um, university, uh, university library, Svetozar Markovic, um, but they are, have a large network of library in Serbia, so a lot of uh, those people are, people are involved as well. Uh, so we want to encourage wiki women, uh, wiki librarian women to get more, more involved, and our success here was that we have a lot of good quality activities, a lot of uh, new female editors, and also really successful She Said campaign. So we had uh, almost 2,000 quotes uh, on this new project, and this is something, this project isn't so active uh, in our community, so this is one of the successes as well. Mm. Okay, so I would like to give you another example. Uh, for example, what ha we have been doing for past seven years already. Uh, well, we have noticed that there is insufficient amount of LGBT plus uh, topics on Serbian Wikipedia as well as the community members. So um, we have tried contacting uh, all the relevant organizations. Uh, and uh, some of the notable ones are civil rights defenders, uh, that is now uh, uh, organization, but also uh, our uh, uh, friends from other Wikimedian uh, communities, and we have had uh, successful uh, 
well, answers, positive answers of cooperation. So we have been organizing Wikilove's Pride in Serbia for quite some time. And uh, usually it's a week-long editathons, editing seminar during Euro Pride last year. Um, also, uh, there were um, photo tours organized always during the, the Pride marches. And our goals were to encourage uh, the attendees to edit Wikipedia independently and in a long run, uh, meaning giving them a safe space and also um, education on how to edit Wikipedia or participate in uh, Wiki, uh, Wikimedia projects in any other capacity. Um, the challenges that we faced are the overlapping of activities during the Euro Prize since there were a lot of uh, events happening, but uh, which uh, resulted in uh, not a lot, not a big number of in-person attendees. Um, also, sometimes during our projects, there were deletion of articles that were deemed um, well insignificant from some part of the community. But we are trying to fix that. And the positive news is that last uh, year we had no vandalism detected on Wikipedia, uh, and we had larger scope of online participants from the general uh, Serbian Wikipedia community. Uh, so that is that our first of our uh, uh, examples. If there are any uh, examples from your communities, we would like to hear them now. If there is something similar that you found a niche that you wanted to uh, emphasize or help, we would be happy to hear about it. Do you have any, um, any idea or do you have any question regarding anything that we said so far? But I would ask you please to come to that microphone near you. That one behind also is okay. Kia ora, I'm Lucy Schrader from New Zealand. Um, I work at Te Papa, our National Museum, and uh, we are still getting started on doing wiki-based projects that are actually interfacing with the community in significant ways. But we are hoping that uh, after this we will actually be working doing maybe some editor funds and things like that with members of the Pacifica communities, including some who will be performing here uh, during this um, event. So please do come along to that. But the main thing I wanted to say about that is, again, there are a lot of challenges related to um, actually getting hold of source material and that source material being appropriate for the community as well and not just, for example, old colonial texts that are about them instead of from them. Um, but in our position, one thing that we have the ability to do in something that I think a lot of clams are probably also open to doing if they get the idea is actually creating that source material because a lot of clams have blogs. They have ways of, of producing articles that can be citable sources. And so if there is information from the community that isn't already in a published source that could be brought together with you know, a, a curator at the GLAM, collection manager, parts of the community, and actually pull it together into a piece that then goes onto the blog, becomes a citable source, and then suddenly you've got material that can be used by the community for the community's goals. That's actually amazing and full support about it. Uh, I also have one news, which is in Serbia, we are currently having the organization uh, of the LGBT, or we call it queer archive, uh, so that is a very significant source, well, from the beginning, from the Yugoslav times, uh, anything that matters to the LGBTIQ plus uh, community, we are uh, happy to have that in one place preserved and that would be uh, something for the future that we can participate and get involved with. Yeah, I just want to add that uh, we are also uh, organizing activities uh, to create those sources. For example, photo tours uh, on Wiki Pride, on uh, uh, Pride. So we have Wiki Love Pride uh, project. So we are gathering those photos, but doing the digitization uh, in Glam program and using that uh, uh, using that materials for a lot of these activities. So we are com combining our program activities on a lot of fields. So yeah, this is this is important. Uh, um, and for example, um, um, I think that the best approach is to go to 
thematic organization that is dealing with specific program. So we don't have the time, but we, we will show you. Uh, we did this as well. So dealing with um, uh, problems that Roma people are facing uh, and oh, we are trying to contact those organizations that are actually having the materials about their culture, their music, their their um, their visibility, uh, visibility in general. So um, I think we are right on time, but maybe some, okay, yeah, Vic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any of those microphones. Yeah, I just wanted to, to share some strategy. What we've been doing from Wikimedia Argentina is creating some collaboration, not only with uh, partners like organizations who are working with the community we want to target, but also with journalists. So during the like the Pride days, which is full of activities and people won't be able to edit because time is 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 not that available, we create like different uh, conferences or talks where we were explaining journalists and talking with journalists who are uh, they have their agenda on LGBT rights. What do we need them to put in news when we to to provide information for our articles? For instance, if they were having an interview with an LGBT a rights defender, just please, could you please provide where was this person born and when and which are the main organizations they were collaborating during their, I don't know, uh, um, activist traje trajectory. So uh, telling them what we do need to have that information to fill those little gaps, like specific information was really useful because this we did it before the Pride March, like two or three talks about that. And these people was then covering that information offering us the data we need for biographies, for instance. So after the Pride Month, we created a new, I mean, we opened a new editathon, and people who was in the first uh, two talks, they came to editathon, and we had a lot of sources that were created in those months. So it was really successful. So I wanted to share that with you. Thank you. This is a great approach, really. We can really use it. <laughs> thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.